Hello and welcome to Physics Problems One by One. So here is a problem. As always, read it, maybe once, maybe twice, and then pause the video and try to solve it yourself. Today the problem is about body on incline. So this body was on incline. Incline, they told us that incline is big enough that body starts to slide. There is friction, but this is a kinetic friction. So body is sliding down and uh, reaches this point and obviously when it's sliding down it's accelerating and from this point it's decelerating because it's still sliding but it's only friction, nothing else. No force that pushes it forward. Here there is a, on this section there is a force that pushes it forward. On this section when it reaches the flat surface there is no force that pushes it forward. And the question is uh, that if there are two body one mass m let's say one kilogram and another is m equal let's say two kilogram how where they stop who will slide more right and uh, this is relatively simple problem but uh, it shows you that the goal i want i have chosen this because it shows you that the goal of second law of motion is to obtain acceleration. And once we know acceleration, we know kinematics, we haven't forgotten it, it's previous two playlists, and in those, using the laws of kinematics, we can find the distances. We can find this distance and everything. So, the first section is this. And of course I can repeat this very fast, but I can also write you a result very fast. I can tell you right away that acceleration for this body uh, equals g sine alpha minus k cosine alpha minus mu minus mu cosine alpha. Nu is a friction coefficient, and if you don't remember this, I can derive it really fast without too many details. So mg n and the friction, this is n, and I can put axis y, and we did it so many times, so I would be really fast. X, it is mg sine alpha, if you don't understand this, look the previous clips. It uh, makes no sense to repeat it again and again. mg sine alpha minus mu n equal ma. And uh, y axis we have mg cosine alpha with minus plus n equal zero. And we have n equal mg cosine alpha uh, because we move it to another side and from here we immediately have that mg sine alpha minus mu mg cosine alpha equal ma M is, mg is factor out we have mg sine alpha minus mu cosine alpha and equal ma and we have oh, I forgot here g and we have this result that a equals g sine alpha minus mu cosine alpha and that's I can even write it here because this is kind of generic result that body slides with this acceleration over incline. And what's important here in this formula is that there is no mass. Mass is cancelled out. And of course if we go without friction, mu equals zero, no friction. That means A equals G sine alpha. And of course if alpha, like I mean if mu equals zero, and let's say A would be 
g sine alpha. And of course, if alpha on top of this equal 90 degrees, it would be a free fall. And if it's free fall, a equal g, because sine 90 degrees is equal to 1. So everything is good, all the extreme situations are covered. But the important thing is that whether we're free falling, whether we on incline and there is no friction, or we on incline like here and there is friction, it still doesn't matter. The A is the same no matter what the mass is. Mass is cancelled out. That means that this body and this body will be sliding with the same acceleration. If they're sliding with the same acceleration, starting from the same point with the same initial speed zero, it takes them the same time to come from here to here. The same time, the same distance, the same final speed would be the same because final speed would be initial plus AT, where T, T is the time for travel and A is this value. So the speed at this point would be the same for both body regardless. Uh, now let's look on this body on this surface. When this body on this surface, there is only mu n. And there is n, and there is mg, and our axis would be x here, and y here, and our second law of motion in projections, I am skipping a couple steps, but we did it so many times. So along x, we will have minus mu n equal ma and along y along y we will have n minus mg equals zero because nobody is accelerating here and we immediately find n equal mg from this and we plug it here and we have a equal ma equal minus mu m g right minus mu m g and we cancel m and we have a equal minus mu g and again mass is cancelled out we're starting with two bodies m and m big m small and m lowercase m, m uppercase with the same initial speed and we obtain this initial speed from this acceleration and of course we go the same distance before we stop and we can find this final stop final speed is zero initial speed is v0 minus a t and a in this case is this we find the time we find the distance that will be all the same the only thing that i want to add that when i wiped it out a equal minus mu g but basically we can receive this result without all of this. We could obtain this result simply by looking here. Because this surface is the same incline where alpha equals zero. And if alpha equals zero, sine alpha equals zero. And cosine alpha equals one. And if I plug this here and here, I will receive A equal g this would be zero instead and this would be minus mu and this would be a equal minus mu g and this is exactly the same result so i did it on purpose but i could uh, apply this formula to this case because this is the case where alpha equals zero this angle is equal zero i hope you like this problem and the thing to like here is that we obtain we used second law of motion extensively sum of all vectors equal ma uh, uh, f friction mu n n equal mg cosine alpha we find all of this x y and then we obtain the acceleration and then we start looking with acceleration because in the end of the day, the whole goal of mechanics is to calculate all forces, we know all forces, 
and then we figure out what this acceleration is and to figure it out we need f equal ma so we tie the reason for the movement which is the force one body pushes another or pulling another body they interacting with each other uh, so the reason for the movement is force but using second law of motion we find acceleration and when we already found acceleration we can find the distances the body travel and in this particular case we see that the distance are the same whether the body is small or big okay thank you very much like subscribe question see you next time